the people that hate on me on Twitter, they didn't come talk to me in person. It's because they're pussies. I don't hate Greg. <laughs> I think he sucks as a coach. There were these three kids I had a poster oh, saying yep. tactical manager for president. And I just went to the dad and said, man, you, you let them watch my content? Not Compared to my shit, like I talk about drugs. I'm a soccer channel. If I was talking yeah, about drugs, really I might have said that Maradona would have done a line of coke at halftime and oh. scored a brace. I pissed off Jeez. almost the entire country of Canada once. I wanted That's her great. Bernard that was the coach of Saudi Arabia. He also looks like a freaking James Bond villain. If he becomes the US coach, my girlfriend's not allowed in the stadiums anymore. I'm not letting this guy <laughs> take her. You know what that means, right? We got to get Bugattis for everybody. They got Rolls Royce for beating Argentina. Depending on what they pay me, I might be able to beat Argentina. <laughs> and if you don't hit the like button, I will come after you. Yeah. <sighs> well, well, well. I drove all the way to Orlando for the night and drive. I flew just for you. No, you didn't. I'm leaving after no, this. No, 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 no. I just got here. <laughs> There's a level of importance here in universe, in not universe, in Orlando. The first one is Mickey Mouse. Okay. Oh yeah. The second one is Governor DeSantis right now. Okay. Maybe not. I don't know how that's going on. But I'm number two. I'm actually number two now. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm. Uh, fun fact, guys. I'm here for. Uh, <laughs> or, I'm here for Universal and like just my own travels. I was like, why not make this kind of like a business trip? I was like, wait, I know people in Orlando, and I know someone quite famous nowadays. Not, not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, it's U.S. soccer is like a very small niche group, right? Yeah, now. Yeah, but everyone knows if you know U.S. soccer. <laughs> in if you know U.S. soccer, yes. Outside of that, no one knows who the heck I am. Uh, you, this is our third, I think, podcast together. Our no, first no. in person. No, no, me and you, it's the second one. But if you count Dustin, he's also in Tactical Manager TV. Yeah, you're right. It's the third one with Tactical Manager TV. Oh, you know what I was thinking, man? I, I, I didn't count the Dustin one. Shout out to Dustin. He was, he was, that was a good You'll podcast. probably watch this. Yeah, I know. I would hope so. Love you, man. I hope you're doing good in Germany. Also, Maxwell. Shout out to Maxwell. Dustin's in Colombia right now. Colombia. Colombia, Colombia. Like Colombia? America, yeah. What's he? Is he going to be okay? Is he going to make it back? He'll be all right. He'll be all right. He can speak Spanish. He's Ecuadorian. He'll be fine. Um, what's he doing there? Just vacationing? Uh, Dustin's a citizen of the world Dustin's now. He's just, just like walking around anywhere. We don't really Dude, know where he is. Dustin, Dustin is such a nomad. Yeah, he, he doesn't really have a home anymore. He's just like in different countries every other week. So, so you guys don't know Dustin is, by the, the producer of the yeah, channel. Yeah. And, and I mean... Tactical manager I, TV. Wait, by the time this is out, he might not be in Colombia anymore. Just walking somewhere else he might it. be he might be here who knows he might be the next jesus you know how, like jesus just did his like journey <laughs> he's just like he got the hair for it he never gave me bread or wine but sure <laughs> outside of that sure maybe maybe okay so we got tasco manager tv here uh in person for the first time and um well I, before i forget shout out to maxwell because i wanted to say that i love maxwell maxwell is so fucking he's such a cutie he's such a little like dude he's blowing up too he hit that 120k now or 100 something. Something. Yeah, crazy, yeah, he, You're up next now. And I mean, you two are long lost brothers too. We are. Dude, you were the ones who Dude, you know what's crazy? Maxwell <laughs> and I hang out sometimes cuz he's only an hour away from me and every time we hang out, we bring up the fact that we would have never met if it wasn't for you. Cuz you were he was in your Airbnb. And I like randomly came in. I was like, oh, what's up? You're Vietnamese? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was covering Charlotte. And he was going to the game. We talked, I think, on Twitter, me and Maxwell. And then we're like, yo, we got to meet at the game that I'll be there. I mean, I already had scheduled with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, And I just told him to come along. And that's where you met him. Dude, do you? Okay, first off, let's bring let's bring it back to Charlotte. That was the first time we met in person. Yeah. You also, bro, crazy experience. Thank you for adding me on to that. Because that was the too. first one that of yours. Of the vlog series, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, so if you guys don't know, he has this vlog series. I'm sure the people who are listening to this are your fans, mostly. And if you're my fan, he does these vlogs where he, uh, he essentially Tattoo Manager TV is a U.S. men's national team based soccer channel. However, it does occasionally deviate mm -hmm. into the whole world of soccer or football, or, you know, that shit. Yeah, we that, call it soccer. Yeah, in Orlando. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's soccer, soccer. So, um. When you, when you started your vlog series, you hit me up because you were in Charlotte, and I only live like an hour and a half from Charlotte, and you are like, hey, do you want to help me vlog? I was like, fuck yeah. So in my head at that time, I, went, I don't even know if I told you this. In my head, I'm just thinking, oh, okay, he's going to get me a ticket. That's sick. We're going to go sit, and we're going to go record. It was a bit more than a ticket. Yeah, dude. You were like, <laughs> like, hold on. I'm going to see if I can get you a media thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I still don't know what that means. So I'm like, okay, we go there. You remember how early we came? <laughs> We yeah, yeah. We, we leave the Airbnb super early because, uh, one, we wanted to get as much footage we, as we could, right? Yeah. We wanted to go to tailgates, wanted to do everything, and, and we did. 
We yes. actually shout out to the three homies that let us uh, uh, stay in that Airbnb. Too. Arnold, Arnold, yeah, I, I tagged them in uh, one of the things too. Yeah, Arnold's a great guy. I, I need him. to meet up with him again. I did meet up with him again. He came to Orlando in the U.S. game. A- LA but, Galaxy boys. Yeah, but but the thing with that was Keep we went on. early. We got as much footage as we could. Mm-hmm. And what was outstanding about it was the first channel, the first vlog of the channel. But when people saw that video, they're like, it didn't look like it. It looked like there was like years of experience with that. And it was a bit of a mix of you having some experience with it. Well, you, you, I, I learned a lot from you too. Because I, I vlog normally. Like that's my stuff. But mm-hmm. I told you this just before off camera. Yeah. I was like, the way that Filippo runs his head it's so organized. Like you were very like, <laughs> you were very, as soon as we're done filming something, you're like, Oh, I don't like it. Let's do another one and then delete it. And I'm like, in my head, I usually just film everything and then I'll delete it later. But then I realized like you, obviously you have an editor that you have to send it to. But even if you edit your own shit, it's so fucking unorganized when you have so much shit and you're like, you got to look for the one that you actually like. You're what you're wasting so much time. And that's something I took down. Yeah. I think not just, I think everything with the channel, right. And if someone watch, if you're a viewer of the channel, you probably might've noticed this. If you're not a viewer of the channel, First time you're hearing this, probably. Uh, almost everything I do is planned. A lot of people think I just go live yeah. and I just improvise. And I mean, of course, when it's a live stream of a game, yeah. I'm mostly Im- reacting. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not improvise, it's not acting. It's just really like sharing my experience. But when I do a vlog, when I do a random live stream, there's a plan. I, I mean, it's not fake, but I do plan out what I'm yes. going to do because if I don't plan out what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter how good you are at it. It doesn't matter it just becomes a hot mess you're so professional with the vlog and like the with with most of your content with the exception of like the lives i would say and the podcast yeah everything else is very professional not not in how uh it looks like everything's minimal which i like which i actually took as you see with the iphone iPhone. (laughs) um but (laughs) it's also it's professional in a sense that you're there on time. You you got you contact these people. You know exactly in your head what you're kind of already envisioning. So the moment you get there, it's not a wasted time. Mm-hmm. Like you remember you told me we're sitting in Charlotte and you're like, okay, as soon as the crowd get in, we're gonna get one pan of like the whole crowd down here. And then we're also let's try to get one of in the yes. I'm like, bro, like this motherfucker thinking about like you had like this shit oh, like, yeah, written yeah. down. You, the the thing is before you do something, I think that applies to anything in life, that's right? True. That's true. You gotta really know where you're gonna go with it. Obviously as you go with it, you need to have some flexibility because walls will show up and you can't just keep hitting your head against the wall. Like people said, Greg Berhalter used to do when he was a player. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, talk yeah. about Greg in a second. Yeah, we'll dude. talk about Greg we'll Berhalter. I have that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll talk about Greg Berhalter. But but y- you have a plan, and you need to see where you're envisioning that going. Yeah. And then there's a wall in the way. You need to be flexible. And you saw that we had to adapt many yes. different. Like when we got to the stadium, remember going back to what he was saying, we got media passes, and we got access to the entire Bank well, of America everything, stadium, except for the vault. That was the only thing. Yeah, that was, that was off the limits for big us. Big ass fucking room. That's a legit vault. We were like, "What is in there? It has to be something." There's a fucking like dead body. I mean, it's the Bank of America Stadium. Yeah, Maybe a lot of money, right? Maybe actually. Yeah. Uh, but 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 we got to know pretty much the entire stadium. They gave us brisket. They fed us. Bro, um, oh yeah, I forgot about that. We walked in the in the, in the we went to the field. Uh, it was a unreal experience, which even shocked me. I didn't know how much access we were truly gonna have. Yeah, I remember you telling me you're um, like, damn, like we can walk. Like we walked on the yeah, field I during didn't, the game. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> expect that much. I knew we had the press box. I knew we would be allowed on the field before, maybe after, but not during. During we were yeah. just like chilling in the, yeah. the game. I, I got I was like this from me to the camera from the corner kicks at one point. And yeah, yeah. It. Well, and, like, and remember when the players were warming up, Julian Araujo walked by yes, me and he recognized you and talked yes, to me. Yes, yes. That so, was crazy. So I think that, and like I said, I had a plan, but at the same time, there were different things that popped up yeah. and we just had to improvise. Yeah. And I think it worked wonderfully because when you have a plan, you know where you want to go with mm. it. It's just going to all work out at the end. And I think so far, every vlog, I, I've done one with you at the channel, that one, the yeah, first yeah, yeah, one, of course, of the course. first one. But all vlogs worked out fine. And by the way, uh, should, should we tell? I, I'm, no, I'm not going to tell you guys. But we're going to have a, I have two special vlogs coming up this year. Really? You know one already, but you can't, do, you can't yeah, talk I'm about it yet. Um, people will find out one day. Yeah. Wait, so tell me. Okay, so after Charlotte. Well, actually, let's finish Charlotte. One more thing I was going to talk about with Charlotte that was really funny is when we sat in that media room after. 
the little fucking like while they're like actually getting asked questions and we're just sitting here like oh. do we look like so not in character compared to everyone else <laughs> everyone's like super like oh right here coach right here and we're just over here like <laughs> like literally, literally yeah like and, and i mean i mean the the thing the thing with me and i always talk about mls with this every single mls game i've gone to in my life I enjoyed every second of it. It's very enjoyable, the experience. I'm sure you had a lot of fun there, too. Oh, I had a blast. Um, but I, it's hard to care about the team for the league. It's hard to have actual emotional attachment to what happens. So in that press conference, I really had nothing to say. Yeah, we were, uh, we yeah, were just, true. like, trying to see the experience. And, and Anjo Ramirez was the coach of Charlotte. He was very emotional because there was 75,000 people. Is he still the coach? No, he left. He, he left. Yeah, yeah, I remember he left. He left. I mean, he, yeah. he, he wasn't the greatest there. But yeah. And Charlotte actually had they a fine. They promoted uh, their captain to uh, assistant coach now. Really? He's the, the, assistant? The, the left back captain guy, the older guy. I don't know if you remember him. No. But now he, he, he retired and now he's an assistant coach, which is interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I but, just found that out. But about saying. MLS was the whole thing was enjoyable, but I didn't have any emotions attached to the teams or to the yeah. league i just really enjoyed the experience and that was wonderful and the game was great there was a nice goal from Efrain alvarez that was a beautiful goal that yes, they scored was. uh and it was fun to see in the u.s seventy-six thousand people i mean if anyone watched mm -hmm. the vlog you saw how much fun we were yep. having yep. with the whole thing that was all real okay we weren't faking anything. yeah yeah we're terrible actors by the way if we were to fake it <laughs> you would all know we're shit actors so Do you know charlotte's still eighth in average attendance in all of the americas it's and number it's one in MLS Charlotte. history. Yeah, it's but like average, like they average like forty three or something, which yeah. is crazy for MLS. What do you think about that? Yeah, the first game bumped it up, and yeah, there's definitely. the first year hype. We'll see if they keep it up. But, yeah, we will. But I thought they did a great job. The people in Charlotte, they need to make a stronger. T they need to develop a stronger team for sure. But it was their first season. So tell me about after that. So the next move after that was the Mexico. It was the U.S. Men's National Team vlog that we qualified to the <gasps> oh, World Cup. Oh, it was yeah, in or in Orlando. It was here, yeah. And I remember, you know, where I was watching that. I was watching in Houston because I was I texted you, you were like oh I'm gonna be in Orlando yes yeah so I was in Houston watching this game which was also a sick game but, yeah but there were some caveats because there were some moments where it was just kind of like well Panama was, was crap right it was yeah, like so bad. five one that yeah. game did we did they score I think they scored one goal Panama At, yeah. but it was in garbage time I think yeah well, Pulisic had a hat trick even Paul Riola and Jesus scored and those guys never score so. Uh, but I, I had lots of fun. That. What was what was wild to me was this: doing the YouTube channel and going to MLS games. Every time I go to an MLS game, like we saw in Charlotte, maybe one or two fans will recognize and talk to you. The US game, there was like so many people that came to talk to me. That's fucking so. That cool. was that, that must was have like felt cool as fuck. It was weird. Oh, it was weird. It was weird. Being recognized. Well, well it was good. It, yeah, it was good because it was recognizing. Oh, thank you. The work you do. I really like your content. So it's good when you get that recognition. That recognition. I'm sure Dustin seeing it. I know they were talking to me, but he understands that when they're talking to me, it's both his work. Both yeah, I talked work. to him about that on the podcast yeah, too. I, he needs to understand. He does understand that. They're like, oh, you, your work is so great. It's like, yeah, he understands. So I'm sure he loved that. He wasn't there in Orlando, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't here. He wasn't. Make him come to one. He was at Germany, I think, at the time. He was, yeah. Yeah, Germany. Um, but it was a bit weird at the same time. But I think the thing I like the most, I, I appreciate every time someone comes in and compliments the content. Obviously, the people that hate on me on Twitter, they didn't come talk to me in person, unfortunately. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't understand that. They're, they're so... They're right, so right, right, right. It's because they're... They're pussies. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, you talk shit and then you don't, you don't, because it's, it's all on a screen, you know? Yeah. The thing with Twitter is people say whatever they want. I say what I want, but I'll, I'll talk to the guys too. I'm not trying to fight anyone on Twitter. Yeah. It's soccer. Dude, could you imagine you and Greg just having a podcast together like this? <laughs> I don't it's like why do you hate me so much man I don't hate Greg that's <laughs> know, the thing I, I don't hate Greg yeah but he's gonna say that because yeah I don't hate Greg I think I think he sucks as a coach I don't hate Greg he has a good like, shoe game if he wants to talk about anything outside of soccer I'm sure we're gonna have a good time talking about whatever it is he looks like a guy that loves basketball we can talk about basketball yeah but I don't think he's a good coach that's the only thing I and we might we're, we're probably never gonna agree on that because I don't think he thinks he's a bad coach right I obviously would yeah but that game, the one thing I liked the most was um, 
There were these four this kids. The Orlando one, right? Four, three kids. No, I think it was three kids. I saw this. Yeah, they were probably between seven to twelve. Yeah, and they had a poster so, saying yep. "Tactical Manager for President." Oh, and I was like, it was so awesome cute. to see that. Seeing you inspire kids, or even, even if your content is kids getting them to enjoy so soccer, cool. that was probably the coolest part. But after the game, when I'm coming up, they were waiting for me at the stairs, and I took pictures of them. That was probably God. Again, I appreciate everyone that came to yeah, me, but course, that but was kids, like the dude. that was like the most special one. And oh. their dad was there with them. No, not dad. I don't think they were all his son. One was his son. There was like two, two friends. friends. Yeah, wow. Um, but that was like very cool. And I, and then I and then I just went to the dad and said, "Man, you you let them watch my content? Yeah. <laughs> what are we yeah, trying? Yours isn't that bad compared to the other stuff that's on YouTube, bro. No, no. Compared I'm to my shit, like I talk about drugs and stuff on my podcast. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm a soccer channel. If I was talking yeah, about you drugs, can't really say I shit. mean, I do make some jokes, like the the Spain one. I don't know if you yeah. watched that. The did you get the Spain wait, wait the the Spain one? That which Spain one? Spain is a team that has lots of possession and no penetration, which I call uh, masturbation. Wait, no. I, you know what? <laughs> I think no. you put that in a on, story. I put it on story too. That's yeah. where I saw it. Yeah, that's yeah. when I. I think I. I, I There's a couple jokes that take it too far. Um, I might have said once that when Argentina was struggling, so I might have said that Maradona would have done a line of coke at halftime and and <laughs> scored a and scored a brace. <laughs> but then Messi came at back at halftime and scored a brace without Bro. doing a line of coke. Yeah. So we'll talk about that too. So Messi was more impressive. Right? So out of all the vlogs that you've been doing, which one uh, do you think is the most memorable? Would it be that one that you recognize so much? Or was it the Mexico one? Well, the Mexico one, I went alone. No, actually, I went with... So, the Mexico one, I record alone, but a viewer of the channel, Sean McCourt... I don't, even know, I don't even know if Sean wanted me to say his name, but too late. Sean, now they know your name. Shout out, Sean. <laughs> I, I'm sure he won't There's care. There's a bunch of Sean McCourt. <laughs> Sean lives here in Florida. He had tickets. Mm. Um, he's where not does a, he live in Florida? <laughs> yeah, what is his address? <laughs> yeah, what's his address? Social security. Actually, might have it, because I sent him a t-shirt. <laughs> It's like, Sean, is it okay if I give them your address, social security? <laughs> no. I know where he works, too. Do you want oh that? My <laughs> no. God. no, but but but, but anyhow. Okay. Um, Sean, wait, wait, so this, the, the, you should talk about the Mexico one, right? Yeah, the Mexico game was here in Orlando against Guatemala. So okay. he, he got me the tickets. I went, I met him at the stadium. I recorded on my own. It was a fun experience. Different. That Any was, hate? No, okay. actually. No one recognized it. No, yeah. no, I wasn't like too worried about it, too. Um, also, a lot of the people think I'm from Mexico, so yeah, that's true. So, yeah, so I mean, they might just that. think I was an L3 fan there. Yeah. There was one viewer that recognized me, and he was a U.S. fan and a Guatemala fan. Oh, fan. perfect! And he even talked, to me, and I saw him at the live chat too. And he talked to me during the game, and it was oh, like, and I'm amazing. like, hey, we're going for Guatemala, right? And he's like, yeah. That yeah. must be a great feeling to get like recognized because <laughs> then you're like, oh, I actually have some influence, like legitimate influence, because like I I've only been recognized once, and it was at a bar. <laughs> by a girl <laughs> yeah I, I don't care much about that part of it um, well, it's the influencing side it's like knowing that you're whatever you say actually has an impact on kids on on and not in not in a negative or positive way it's more about the fact that you saying something can uh not only influence but like educate because like a, like imagine being 12 right like those kids who watch soccer casually they don't know what is actually going on besides the ball passing around they watch you now you're explaining tactics you're explaining yeah. this my goal with it mainly and i don't even go into talk shit about greg it's just to talk shit about greg yeah no my main goal is not even to explain i mean i like to keep everything very simple yes. when explaining it because i don't th i don't find in-depth analysis of soccer very well, I can't understand entertaining. It. Yeah, and you don't care. Yeah, you know Tifu, Tifo, Tifo. Tifo? Tifo? They're not even that much in the details. If you go more towards like a a football manager data driven explanation, nah, I'm good. That yeah, yeah. No one <laughs> Tifo learns. already likes when they do the they whip out the yeah, but they're thing. simple. There's sometimes sometimes yeah, they yeah, use yeah. some terminology where I'm like uh, yeah, but but you could go more into details with advanced analytics yeah, of, of course, like of you can use like from football manager. They have a lot of that in the video game and. Um, you can go into positional play, explain. Oh, th th there's different things, but that's not what I want. What I mainly want when I'm doing content is to keep people entertained and interested. So that's why people will see um, excessive bantering. And you have good topics. Yeah, the topics, really topics. I want. I want people. I don't want people to. You see, there's probably a lot of fans that know more than me. 
maybe maybe not information because I'm following it more than them. Yeah. But maybe they understand the game even better than me. They can. Of they, course. They, 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 there's probably a lot of them because there's thousands of people that watch me. My goal is not to know more than anyone. Right. I don't care about being right. I don't care about being wrong. Right. I care about not being boring. Definitely. I, I will. OK, that's a great goal to have as a YouTuber. I'm going to say I use your channel. I use like uh, to compare, even though comparing is bad, but like you, Maxwell, and like, let's see who else uh, that I, well, now it's just you guys that I really want. Oh, I watch uh, B-Monus, but B-Monus is, he doesn't do a lot of just soccer. He does all sports. So you, I will pick because you do all the research for me. <laughs> that's how I pick it. Like that, that too. That too. That, I love that. I mean, the the Americans Abroad series. Oh my god, that that's is what that's what I want. That the is most. literally me just taking the time. That's no expertise, by the way. That's just me taking the time to watch as many games as I can, collect information. Like, yeah. oh, you didn't watch all the Americans? I got gotcha. you. In yeah. twenty minutes, you're gonna I know everything love that happened. That shit, bro. So what I to- that's what I'm telling you. My goal is not to know more than anyone or teach anyone anything. It's more of like. Keep you updated, yeah, okay. save you valid, time, valid. and entertain to a point where you want to watch. That's why I. That's why the bantering that I do is yeah. I try. People say sometimes that I banter too much. I think I don't banter enough. I want to. I. I. My now goal, you have a podcast for that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I pissed off Tactical almost Yanks. the entire country of Canada once. Even their media was coming wow. out. They're yeah, bit, yeah. They yeah. were pissed off because I put an American flag on Jonathan David. Um, Mexico L three fans too, but but that's. That's what soccer's about. It if you is, can't dude. banter, if you can't get fan bases unrattled, there's nothing to discuss. And then the sport, the sport isn't fun. We should push. We should push for more of that. Think about NBA, and think about the biggest names in NBA uh, when it comes to outside of the actual athletes. So Stephen A. Smith. You got the people. And they're all just bantering. Stephen half the A. Smith um, is. Uh, whether you guys, whether people like him or not, he's I just want to say one thing. He's a great professional on what Absolutely. he does. Does he know his shit in regards to the sports? I would argue maybe Basketball, not. Basketball, yes, but nothing else. Nothing, but he talks nothing about anything. Else. And if yeah. he talks about soccer, you'll listen. Well, I have heard it. That shit is Remember hilarious. him talking about Greg? He's like, you telling me. You know, what is, how does he say it again? You got to do a, you're telling me that you get a 2-0 lead. You, you lose 2-0 and you're telling me you have been dominant. I'm looking at you with my eyebrow ra- <laughs> eyebrows raised right now. So Stephen A. Smith is entertaining. Um, yes. Yeah, he, he'll talk about any sport, even that he doesn't know, and yeah. you'll still listen, you'll well, still that's watch. Well, because you have to. He has to, though, also, because being in the format of ESPN, you have well, to. Well, but that's why he's successful, and, yeah, and, and he keeps people interested. My of goal course. of soccer is not to teach anyone. People, look. Entertain. You, most, look, most soccer fans, even outside of the U.S., even if you go to Brazil, they don't know jack shit about tactics. They don't care. They want to yeah. go see the guys kick the ball yeah. around. You can you can have the time of your life mm-hmm. and not even know what formation they're playing. You don't care. You want to see a goal. You want you want your favorite player to play. You don't care. Wait. So this is something before I forget. When you were talking about this uh, going uh, abroad series that you have, uh, it's people that this is great for your fans. People don't realize that. Even in a series that is just you kind of bantering about it and explaining what like who what happened where, you do put in like bro when we were in Charlotte uh, with Maxwell in the oh yes I was working had fucking iPad laptop yeah. fucking phone three games going at once and as, as something happens he's like oh hold up screenshot let me draw this. I'm gonna put that in the game I'm yeah, like what yeah. the no, fuck okay. I'm that over is here true like this that is true the way the way I do the abroad series yeah. is I do you put in that word the dude. games I watch I do try to break down basics of tactics so people know how the player played oh, where no, he played. It's, it's more about the work that you put in no that, that too yeah yeah that. because well here's the thing if i do lazy work where i don't put enough work then you can just go do your own research on google that's true i want to do something that's like you miss the game mm-hmm. when i talk about it, you're like okay i more or less know what happened yeah, yeah. and when they play i know that's what i try to do that's why when people watch the series they see screenshots of the game Rather than just, I'm not just going to go and say Pulisic played 90 minutes and scored a goal. Yeah, that would be so lame. That would be quick and easy. That's like radio. Yeah, and I'll probably like be able to people. do it in like, I'll probably be able to do it in half an hour. While I you, do, you saw the time I put there, but you probably have an idea. People don't have an idea. Yeah. Dustin does, you do. Well, you have to plan hours because uh, I remember you I said that probably, you have, in the airport. 
you also had to write down. And I like finished script. it in the airport, the script. Yeah, the script. And you, people don't realize. And that's that goes beyond your channel. People don't realize that a lot of, uh, whether regardless if you're a vlog channel, regardless if you're Maxwell, a script he, style. His is a lot of work. It's so much work. And people don't, I don't think, if you're not in the space of YouTube, you don't understand it. Yeah, so the Abroad series, um, take watching the games aside because I enjoy watching the game. The work of scripting, cool recording, yeah. get everything, and then Dustin still has to edit it, right? Yeah. I don't edit. I spend my whole Sunday finishing it. <sighs> Dude, and people also, shout out to Dustin because as someone who edits his own videos and I had to hire an editor, like editing is a bitch, dude. I mean, I don't like, um, I don't like, well, it's actually, I was going to say that editing is also not busy work because it's different. A big part of the creativity is the script and the editing combined, right? Because with the editing, with the right zoom ins, with the right pictures, with the yeah. right effects, that's creativity. So if editing was just busy, I know there's a part of editing that's just yeah. busy work when you're cutting here and there. Yeah. But it's it's annoying because it's a mix of a lot of busy work. Mm -hmm. But you do have to also have an open mind and be creative about it. And, and that's what Dustin does with the channel. I think you can have a good channel without editing, like great editing, but you can't have a great channel. You can only have a great channel with both. No. Essentially. Cause, no. Because yeah, if you clip shit together i'm sure you can put great information a, a good example is a finance channel like if they're just talking to the camera and just relaying information they're a good channel i might listen to them i'm not gonna listen to every time because it's not grasping because the editing isn't there they're not chopping they're not putting the pictures of like when you say palusic there's a funny ass picture of palusic or him yeah. with the shirt off of showing that like that that side of it the for you to have a channel where you just go on camera and talk you need to be like massive already you have like to. if freaking Kanye West right now. With, <laughs> just ranting. With yeah. every, everything he's doing, if he goes and he just freaking starts well, He's not going to be allowed on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, me see another, let me see another guy. Um, is Donald like Trump boogeyman. allowed nowadays? I don't think so either, bro. They're um, like, dude, they are like Voldemort. <laughs> you yeah, can't say their names. Who's like, who has like some crazy shit that's allowed nowadays that would get a big fall? Elon Musk, is he allowed on YouTube? He is. Yeah, Elon, he goes, Rogan, yeah, uh, Elon like can people. Elon can just go there and talk, and yeah. he'll get millions of views. Oh, of so, um, obviously, not as many as um, Kanye and, and Donald Trump, but or Filippo. I definitely <laughs> don't get. <laughs> Yo, let's talk but, about this. Um, well, it's connected. So the whole topic of Greg Berhalter, but also the Gio Reyna shit, bro. Because I've been waiting to talk about this shit with you, bro. I've been following all that. So that shit is. First off, if you guys don't know. This is from my outside perspective, knowing. So, Gio in the World Cup didn't get much minutes. And then we find out later that Greg had told him that he wasn't going to, from the beginning, like he was like, yo, you're going to have limited minutes. Yeah, limited role that he said. Which is also, in my opinion, bad. No, I want to say bad coaching as bad communication. Man management. Man Just, management. Yeah. Like, if, if he's like, what is he, 19? 20 he turned 20 i think after the world cup or during. yeah i well it's bad uh it's bad emotional iq too because do you not remember how it was when you were 20 and being told that well i mean he did something shit? worse when he was 20 right oh yeah <laughs> so i mean <laughs> but I, like you know like what, what was going on in your head during this the situation and and just to wrap it all up so that you're up to speed if you don't know geo it, it, it was a back and forth between greg re releasing in a in the it was like at some press conference thing. yeah i can summarize it quickly uh greg went to geo before the world cup and told geo that he would be in the limited role geo apparently geo reyna didn't really react well to that got pissed yes. apparently wasn't was creating a toxic environment um but apparently that was resolved Right within the team, and then, but then <laughs> Giovanni Reyna's parents were pissed yeah. off about it, and they're buddies with Greg Berhalter for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a more than our mm -hmm. lifetime. They they were buddies, and then what happened was after the World Cup, Greg Berhalter went to a presentation or something that was apparently he thought it was off the record, and he told a story about a player that he almost kicked out of the World Cup, which everyone was like. 
It's we Gio. know you're talking about Gio. And then Gio's mom got pissed off about that, Danielle Reyna. And then she released some shit. Yeah, she didn't release. She went to Ernie Stewart, the sporting director. Sporting director? Well, the guy that hired Greg uh-huh. Berhalter. Um, and he, she went to him, and apparently they're friends. And she mentioned that when Greg was younger, when he was around Gio's age at age 18, he had, he had kicked um, his now wife, Rosalind, or domestic violence incident um and they forget apparently what i think daniel reyna was trying to do is saying why is he doing this to my son uh, about my son's mistake if when he was that age he did something worse i think that's what she tried to do the problem is ernie stewart is the boss of burhalter so when you say that he needs to investigate it um and And then then when the media takes it they're going to just take the best thumbnail or like the best title. Yeah. And, and so then, it becomes domestic and, violence. And it was weird. Um, when you saw the, when you saw the, then Greg Berhalter pretty much released a statement about it. He leaked it because no one talked about it until Greg. I really didn't even know about the kicking. Yeah. Why did he yeah. leak it? That's what I don't understand because he didn't have to leak it, Greg. But Greg made a Twitter account, which by the way, he liked one tweet on Hello? Twitter. He liked one tweet on well, Twitter. No way. You don't believe me? No, I believe you, but like, what? What tweet was that? And then he unliked it. It was the one that I... <laughs> and then he unliked it. Which one was it? It was the one that I, I shared a video where the guy says that Greg Berhalter used to headbutt walls when he was a player. Oh, my God. I think he liked it on accident. Then he Or he might have liked it because he thought it was like, oh, like, he's a fan. He likes me. But then he realized, oh, he's no, like, he's not mm, a fan. Never mind. <laughs> no problem with the person, even though... I do have a problem. Of the coach. I do have a lot of problems with what he did 30 years ago by kicking Rosalind. But, uh, but again, that's not. It's not. I'm not the one that has to forgive him. She yeah. forgave him. So no now, problem. your opinion. Do you think he, was he already in the outs, or was we don't like, know? What, okay. Yeah. I mean, right now he's. It's still. Waiting. It's still up in the air because it's he's he's up. To, he's. His contract's over. So, like, he has to either renew or they have to find someone else. His contract is over, but they're saying that he's still in contention to be the coach. Right now, we have an, inter- so crazy. We have an interim coach right now, which is a horrible coach, terrible coach. Who's that? I don't know that. Anthony Hudson. That's all you need to know. I don't know. Yeah, most people don't. It's better <laughs> that way. Um, a very mediocre MLS coach. But they said he's still in contention. So I don't know if he's going to stay. I don't know if we're going to hire an actual coach. Who should we even hire? I wanted Best Herb word. Bernard that was the coach of Saudi Arabia in the World Cup. Oh, you! I watched your video on that. I wanted him, yeah. He Because he, bro, Saudi Arabia would be he also, Argentina. Baby. He also looks like a freaking James Bond villain. Yeah, he does. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say he one. He speaks good English. He speaks good English. Excuse but I'll say one thing. Um, if he becomes the U.S. men's national team coach, my girlfriend's not allowed in the stadiums anymore. I'm not letting this guy take her. <laughs> also, you know what that means, right? What? We got to get fucking Bugattis for everybody, just like they did. <laughs> <laughs> fucking do the song. They got Rolls, Rolls Royce for beating Argentina. What kind of bullshit is that? I mean, if, depending on what they pay me, I might be able to beat Argentina. <laughs> Next time, next time he gets the that guy gets hired, and then you guys only hear Filippo and uh, Dustin, their channel only talk great stuff about, him, never critique him, and then you're like, wow, even when he had a terrible game, and then you see him pull up in a Rolls Royce, and you're like, ah, I get it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I see what's going on. I'm not a sellout, but but <laughs> here's the thing: if you go back to that game and you look at his halftime pep talk to the Saudi team. You're like, holy crap, yeah. that guy got them pumped. That was the, lo- the locker room one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it I was crazy, but but well. but not just that. Um, he won the African Cup of Nations, right, which is a tough tournament. Mm-hmm. He won with Zambia. Wow. He I also, didn't know that. He also won it again with Ivory Coast. So that's two different titles. There were two yeah. different national teams, two same it's titles. Coach. So They overachieved with them. Yeah, which and, is good. and people are saying he didn't get out of his group, but it's freaking Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Did you expect him to get out of the group? I didn't. I just don't. I don't know. We're in a weird spot in the U.S. where we have so much talent that can be, but they're still so young. So it's like, can they be? And then we're stacked in certain areas, but then there's always injury problems too. We're very heavily stacked on injuries. Well, I, I think they're young, but they're already experienced enough. Yeah, if the coach, after this one maybe. If the coach is willing to play the best players, bring the best players to the roster, and That's actually huge. and actually develop a team with them, because yeah. national team doesn't really develop players. You develop a team. They get developed in the club. Uh, you can do it. You've seen, I mean, I do think Morocco's better than us on paper. 
not by a lot, but they are better than us on paper. They made it to a semifinal, so why can't we make it at least to a yeah. quarterfinals, right? We've also seen, and also Morocco's path to the semifinals was Morocco's tough. It was crazy. They had to get out of the group of Croatia, Belgium, and Canada. Then they beat Spain. Then they bro, beat Portugal. Spain one was they wild, sent they bro. sent Cristiano Ronaldo to Saudi Arabia. Bro, Hakimi, Hakimi Ziyech. Hakimi. But Ziyech. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I I think that we have enough talent to do damage if we have a good coach. But for us to do big damage, home turf too. Yeah, we need a coach that can get us to punch up of our weight. Yeah, that's not Burhalter. Um, you predicted the World Cup, if I'm not mistaken. On our podcast, you said Argentina is going to win it, and if it's not Argentina, it's Brazil. I might have said the other way around. I might or, have said I might have said Brazil, and if it's not Brazil, it's Argentina. Okay, because well, I would never go for Argentina. Close. Yeah, it was one or another to me, and I got Argentina. Let's be honest, one of the best fucking finals of all time. Uh, one of, I, I I think it might have been the best. Final. I, in my lifetime, yes. I can't claim for anything else because I didn't watch anything else. Yeah, but in try, my lifetime, that is definitely. The I try, best. try to go back. Um, Sure, we can't really talk about the 80s, 70s. Right? I don't know any of that shit. But from the 90s beyond, yeah, this was the best final. Bro, that, bro, I was watching at my house, bro, with, like, people over. Bro, I was shit in the bed, because I'm a, I'm a Messi fan. Like, I just because of talent. Like, as growing up, like, I, he got me into soccer. I was like, oh, I want to be like Messi, you know? Which other people, they're like that with Ronaldo, which I understand. Ronaldo's great, too. But, you know, I just wanted him to have one. He just, he just needs one, bro. And so that shit, when, he, when, when fucking Mbappe fucking scores and just and then he they go over it was like 3-2 right before the tie or no 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 uh, Argentina had a 2-0 lead and then Mbappe got a brace yep and they tied and then in extra time Argentina got a 3-2 and Mbappe tied again bro, on a penalty cr- kick I was crying bro uh, I'll tell you one thing um, I'm so stressed I've always recognized the talent of Mbappe I've always talked about how like yeah I, <laughs> but I never liked him I don't like him but that final I still don't like him very much um, but that final here in my full respect because he's G it, it's just the way he stepped up in that game. And then he yeah. went to the penalty shootouts. He took his penalty, converted it. Also great coaching move because, um, they, after halftime, they moved him in position to where well, he wanted to be. Yeah. And I think he actually made changes in the middle of the first half. Quite possible. It was before halftime. Okay. Okay. He took out. Cause Giroud. I just remember, I, I remember Mbappe started as uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was starting on the wing, right? He's always played on the left wing. I don't and know. And then he pushed him into center. I don't remember right now. They might have, but yes, he made changes quickly. Giroud left the game. Early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and motherfucker that was slow. But he's he's a, he, he's a, I mean, he's a legend. In the World Cup, he's a legend. Like that motherfucker does not fold under pressure. I, I had this theory that he's they only slow. play him because he's good looking, but <laughs> he actually is a useful player. Bro, up to that point, that motherfucker was putting in through the net or ass- assisting. But um, no, he's a legend for France for sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, I was gonna say with Mbappe, I think the problem that I have with him, besides the whole Madrid fall out thing too, is just I think that he thinks that he is so gold goaded already, and like just having them and a perfect person that's in his position that is handling it perfectly is Erling Holland. I fucking love that guy. He's just so humble about it. But Mbappe is far more accomplished. He is absolutely. But Erling Holland, like I feel, well, granted, if he gets these accomplishments, will he end up like that? I hope not, because right now he's fucking hilarious. Yeah, Holland is a different guy, right? He's very charismatic. So um, he's a funny <laughs> dude. Reminds me of Majin Buu. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah like, oh, yeah. That's right. But the thing with Holland is he's never going to win a World Cup. That's not going to happen. Mbappe. Fuck no. Mbappe already has one. Uh, he and and the funny thing about both of them is they play for Man City and PSG, which yeah. means they probably won't win a Champions League until they leave. <laughs> There's higher odds of Mbappe leaving one day, maybe, than Holland. I, I don't know. I can actually see Man City taking it more than PSG, though, because PSG, bro, they are cursed, bro. They can, they you could pay for everybody. So is Manchester City. Yeah. They They're lost that final stacked right that now. That final against Chelsea. Recently. Remember the final against Chelsea? They were a better team. Yeah. And then Kai Havertz, like this Chelsea yeah. team's not very good. They just lost recently to uh, a pretty shit team. I'm not mistaken. Well, they they lost to many shit teams, but but they lost to Fulham, and Fulham Fulham is a good team. Um, uh, are they? Yeah, they're in sixth or seventh. Oh shit, they're good. I haven't. I I don't follow them. Tim Ream. I follow everybody else. Tim though. Ream in that back line. Tim Ream is in the back line. Interesting. And A Rob are the left back. I watch uh for EPO. I just watch like I follow me and you. 
just to see what's going on in their life. Yeah, I've, I've, they, they kind of lost me. The thing is, they're doing good now. I only have one team. It's Palmeiras from Brazil. That's yeah. like my actual team. Then, then I kind of like hope for Manchester United to have some success. I hope for Orlando City to have success. Oh but yeah, that would be cool. But it's not like I, if they lose, yeah. I'm like down for the no, day. No, I'm like that with almost every single team. I'm not I like that with a, Palmeiras. Yeah, because you, you're a diehard though. Like yeah, you which, grew up in like that state. Area. Which, by the way, now that we're what we're like thirty minutes or forty minutes into the podcast, if someone made it this far, they kind of deserve it to know. Um, that's probably one of the vlogs I'm gonna yeah, make this year. I'm probably gonna go to Brazil over the summer. <sighs> gonna go to a Palmeiras game to give everyone a Brazilian experience of soccer. And the one you know already is I'm going to Mexico. Oh, that's, that's Mexico and Brazil. So These two vlogs will be different because I've showed people the experience in the U.S. I know the experience in Brazil, but I want to show everyone the experience in Brazil and I want to show the one in Mexico. And trust me, I've been, I haven't been to Mexico yet. I've been to Mexico. I've never been to a game in Mexico. Mm -hmm. The experience in Brazil, Mexico is probably similar to Brazil. The experience is much different when compared to the U.S. You, I, and I'm not going to say the whole story that you told me for obvious reasons. Oh yeah. Don't leak but, everything. Yeah. But, th but one of the stories that you did tell me about Brazil, all I will say about it is when you were, when we were in Charlotte, you were like, bro, if this many people were in Brazil, you couldn't hear. Like you, your ears would be bleeding. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Jesus. If you Christ. go to, a, I'll give an example. Um, mainly Flamengo, no matter kind yeah. of stadium. That that fan base. I don't like Flamengo, but I mean, props to that fan base. They're Loyalty. crazy. But Brazil is kind of crazy. I, I told you the story about my sister. I was, yep. I was, what was I? I was probably ten, and my sister was eight. She's two years younger than me, and we went to a game. A final it was Botafogo in America. The name of the team was America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that at team. Rio de Janeiro. And then we were at a VIP section with glass and everything. And my dad is an America fan. That's why he belongs Hello. here in America. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was an America fan. And my sister was young, so she dressed up his daughter as an America fan. And she was messing just like with the Botafogo fan. The whole Botaf Botafogo is a much bigger team than America. So they packed the Maracanã Stadium. It's probably like 50,000, 60,000 Botafogo fans. And she was like just messing around with the Botafogo fan. And the guy was messing around back, which was fine. The problem was the ultras or the main supporters or the sometimes criminals, they, oh. they saw it. <laughs> as soon as they saw it, we started to hear... I think it was ten to fifteen thousand people, maybe more, chanting "whore" to an eight-year-old. Oh my! Dude. It was my that mom pulled so her funny. back and just like you're getting away from that glass, and and it was just like you can't. This wouldn't happen in the U.S., dude. Did she know what that word meant at that time? At that time, probably. probably well, not. Okay, maybe did, but just like the, didn't care. She was like giving them like this. She was like pissed off at them. She's yeah, calling she's them out. Gene, I was bro. like, look, we're trying not to die here today. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's another thing you have to worry about. Yeah, you, it's not that bad. It's not that violent. Not but, anymore. But, but back no, then, yeah, maybe. Maybe not too much. There were fights that would break out. But, I mean, I, what I think happened was from far away, I think it's a bunch of drunk dudes. I don't think they noticed there was an eight-year-old. Yeah. Wait, didn't you? Yeah, true. Did you tell me that in Brazil, if you wear the opposing team's jersey, like... Yeah, you can't wear it. Yeah. If you go to a, a let's say... Like put it under. Let's say your team is playing away. If you want to go to... No, not even under, dude. Wow. You don't You don't wear it. Because if you put under and someone notices, they'll rip it off from you. Wow. Um, so if you're going to a game from your team and it's That's away... Crazy. You go with a neutral t-shirt or jersey or, or don't... Or just go shirtless, I guess. But... Um, <laughs> You don't Take go with your, you can't do what we do here in the U.S. Like uh, Inter Miami comes here to play in Orlando, you can walk around the middle of the Orlando City fans with an Inter Miami jersey. They might troll you. There might be bantering. Maybe yeah, that's how I was in Italy. You're, they're not gonna pull your, rip your shirt off. You're not gonna get hit. That's not gonna happen. I will say that they're um, okay. So in two different countries, from experiences, uh, firsthand experience in Italy, it's not too bad, but it is a little sketchy. Like they're kind of like oh yeah like it's probably in between yeah, South America like they and the give US. Give you shit and they're kind of like oh yeah yeah it really is. But then I did hear that in England, um, not EPL but the other leagues mm -hmm. that are diehards. If you there are motherfuckers that will. I fight mean you. they used to have the hooligans there. Yeah and, the, yeah yeah. Like, and shit those, like that, bro. those are bad. Yeah those like are, shit like that, bro. And there might still be around some I of them. Think so, there is still. So I can see that being and a problem. And by the way, that's pretty much people who literally just wreak havoc at these games of other opposing teams. Pretty yeah. Much. After what, games. What's going to be funny is I'll, I'll show 
I'll show the, ex the the thing is besides violence apart, the experience of going to a game in Brazil is something I always recommend people. It is absolutely stunning. It's simply amazing. So it's something I definitely recommend people. I will show the experience at some point this year. Um, unfortunately, assistant to yeah, the tactical okay. manager won't be there. You won't be there. I'll be at the next Charlotte one. The next Charlotte one, there. or maybe something in the U.S. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, okay, World Cup 2026. Mm -hmm. It's going to be here, baby. You ready? How many tickets are you about to buy? <laughs> How much are you saving up right now? <laughs> How mean, many thousands are you forking up? <laughs> Because like, them tickets are going to be cheap, bro. Yeah, I started like this um, this fund, kind of like when you when you have a kid and you're preparing yeah. for college, a college fund. <laughs> you started when you were 10. <laughs> yeah, I started. Your dad I started. <laughs> no, One day you'll go to a World Cup, Filippo. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think the problems will even be the tickets. It'll be traveling. All uh, the expenses of like traveling. Oh, you're right. Because tickets will, like, think tickets about it this way. Up. Well, the thing is, um, but also with you, if I'm not mistaken, you're around three of the arenas. Atlanta, Miami, Miami, Atlanta. Orlando won't have it, so two. Oh, but 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 here's the thing. I'll um, twelve fucking hours. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, but it's still hotel costs, everything. The the true, thing, true, true. the tickets usually aren't that expensive because you buy it through FIFA and they cap it. They don't. They if you buy it from someone else, yeah. They'll, Is they'll, it capped? They don't put it super super high. The FIFA. So, but then they're gonna get sold out really fast. Well, it's lottery for oh, you to buy. It? For you to buy. Yeah. How do I sign up for this? You sign up a year before usually. Bro, can we make a group chat or something? I need to remember. Yeah, this we shit. we need to we need to sign up for the lottery and try to get as many tickets as we can. Dude, I'm gonna get like everybody to sign up. Yeah, I me. need to. <laughs> I, I, the thing, your question is interesting because I need to figure that part out because I can go to the game uh -huh. and do a vlog, or I can stay at home and I can cover it on the live watch along. Oh, I think you should do both. I uh, can't do both. No, I'm saying like I think you should go to at least one game. Oh, I, I would like to go to all. If I if I could oh, choose, bro, if I could how choose, how much money you got? <laughs> Goddamn! Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. We got three years. If I can say, why don't why not split it? Do some games and do some games at home. Yeah, I have to think at the time too. Um, like this World Cup, it depends on sponsorships. Yes. Sometimes the sponsor says, "Hey, I want you at the game doing a vlog for me." They'll pay, and I'll yeah, go to the game. They, they might want here personally. Um, and this is something I can tell people too. I don't know if people know this. I enjoy doing the vlog, but it kind of ruins your experience as a fan when you're doing a vlog. Dude, because it does become work. You did that. I so you saw that. Dude, you I you remember. have to record so much stuff. And and that's something that I, I'm, I hope people appreciate when I do a vlog because I am literally giving away my experience. I'm yeah. losing it. I have fun. I do have fun. We had a, a great time. Yeah, yeah. It took about... It took about 50 minutes into the game i'll say at the 50, first to sit down fit, for a bit yeah where we were like all right we're pretty much done so we can yeah. actually watch this we fucking just need game. to like do the closing yeah, just at the, the act end. we just sat we sat up there really yeah. high we just sat yeah. <laughs> we're just like dang it's nice to sit the thing <laughs> the thing is when you do a vlog you are you, you lose a lot of the experience, yeah. right? You can still have a good time, but you don't have that experience as a fan. If I go to a United States men's national team game, I would like to be a fan. Yeah. I would I would like to go root for my national team. I would like to go curse them out and and, well, and, and support them. And, and, and when you're in a vlog, I can do it, but you're also focused on the vlog. And now, here's an idea. I don't know how practical this is, okay? And I'm taking a, a note from that twitch guy. i don't watch him but his, his speed he's huge speed yeah. yeah he's huge and why not live stream you just watching this game i mean yes you will have to interact like talk to the camera some uh it would still be work but you don't have to actually yeah but if you're gonna go to the stadium you yeah, might as well yeah, show yeah, the yeah, experience yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, american yeah, sports yeah, fans yeah, so right. they can see it um uh, that I, would be pretty cool I, to see. I, I i'll just say one thing i've gone to plenty of soccer games in my life more than i can count as a fan and i've gone right now to do charlotte mexico u.s men's national team austin man city i've done five vlogs the experience of the fan the experience of a vlog they're both amazing they're both they're different. different that's yeah. the thing um and personally if my team is playing 
I prefer the fan experience than the vlog. Yeah. If it's a, if I go and it's like England and France, I'll, I'll do a freaking yeah. vlog and I'll have the time of my life. Yeah. I don't care who wins. Yeah. Um, but if it's like Brazil or the U.S. playing, I kind of would want to just be a fan. So if you, it's pretty much if you guys see him doing a vlog, uh, you guys have to appreciate him more. <laughs> and uh hit no, no, the like understand, understand hit the like button yes hit the no, like no. button uh understand that he is pretty much batman he's doing um, the stuff on in the dark and s sacrificing his free time just for us just like batman because for, for the for the people yeah <laughs> for the people. yeah it, it, uh, and if you don't hit the like button i will come after you yeah and then um dustin would be would dustin be alfred or would he be like he would no. He would pop, no. He wouldn't even be Robin. I feel like he'd be like Superman. He's no. um. He's Superman's um. Out there. Who is Morgan Freeman in that movie? Yes, he's uh. Um, whoever the fuck Morgan Freeman is. Does anyone know? Fre no, he's just Morgan Freeman. He's Morgan Freeman. He's just yeah. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah, he's Morgan Freeman. Who was? It was Fox. Yeah. Fox. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to get tickets. I'm gonna see what I can do because on the East Coast we have a good amount of stadiums. I think uh. I think the West Coast only has the LA, Cali, the, yep, the LA's or Cali's. Seattle, uh, and then there. Well, in it's kind of in the middle, but um, the Kansas City or Kansas. Uh, yes, that's Midwest. That's in the middle, right? um, and I think that's and Texas, which is central. Yeah, Texas is only a two hour flight, but yeah. it'll far drive though. Uh, but yeah, so and then the rest is in the east, and then or in Canada and Mexico. Yeah, I'm not going to Canada. No offense to the, the rude Canadians. Uh, do. Maybe well, Toronto. US is probably not playing in Toronto, but I have family there. Toronto was pretty fun. Yeah, I'm not maybe lie. Toronto. Yeah, maybe Toronto. Have you been to Toronto? I've been near Toronto, but I haven't. I lived in Buffalo. I should have gone to Toronto. It's so Americanized. Diff yeah, yeah, I mean, Canada's America, essentially. But what I will say It's America, but colder and some sometimes more rude. Really? Okay. So my experience in Toronto was it is a lessened version of New York, but clean and safe. It was so safe. I went in downtown okay. and I was just like, I mean, I've always felt, I've, I've always felt safe in New York city. Yeah, I mean, you can get attacked yeah. by pigeons. There's sometimes homeless people and, and giant rats, but, but I mean, it's still safer than walking around in Orlando where an alligator on, can attack. I'll, you. I'll argue that it depends on where you are in New York. Yeah. I've been a lot. I lived in long Island, so I would go to okay. New York city a lot. Yeah, um, I, I, I have been years. in certain area. Uh, a great example is not, not not nothing wrong with this area, but I was in Brooklyn for a um, a comedy show. Depends where in Brooklyn, by the way. Yeah, there's and, very nice areas in Brooklyn. And I was going, and we had just gotten off the train tracks, and it was late. So because comedy shows are usually typically late, and it, walking there was fine, but going home when it was like pitch, bro, it was like. Bro, am I in the fucking like projects or something? Like, I'm not getting shot. Man. I was like, yeah, I mean, I've racks. been I've been to Brooklyn a lot. I have friends that live there, but just they live in nice fair. areas. There's yeah. some very nice areas. If you go near uh, Barclay, is it Barclays Arena? Okay, okay, the yeah, Brooklyn yeah, yeah, Nets yeah, one. Nets arena. That area around there was very nice when I was at least when I was there, and that was many many years ago. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've also grown used to going to stadiums in very bad areas. Yeah. Um, probably no one knows about this because they're probably not Brazilian watching this. But if you go to Rio and you go to the Engenhão or you go to São Januário, Engenhão, you have to park on a mall and you have to walk through a very weird area. São Januário is also, I think São Januário is literally border with the favela, if I'm not mistaken. Bro, that's how it was when I went to uh, Italy and went to a fucking... Um, oh, trust me, it's definitely not like Italy. <laughs> Dude, Brazil. what what is that team? Fuck, they're in the Serie A, but they're like in the big or small, a small team. Uh, green and black. Sassuolo. Sassuolo. Bro, when we went there, I, I was like, bro, are we in the projects of Brazil? That was the first thing I thought. And I was I like, might have to go there to evaluate that because <laughs> it was fucking scary, bro. I was like walking to the stadium. I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? The stadium. You're like, wait, this is a Serie A stadium. Like you you look around and it looks like fucking is chipping, bro. Though the bathrooms, oh my, don't even get me started. It's like holes, bro. Actually, Brazilian stadiums might be better than. <laughs> yeah, it probably because is. Because if most well, of the corruption that happened in Italy, it, it fucked them up. Yeah, and and Brazil stadiums, a lot of the ones they use now were the ones from the World Cup. World Cup which so they're very they're nice. like super nice. So yeah. the stadiums in Brazil for the mo in this first division, most yeah. of them are very nice stadiums. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like they're like World Cup stadiums. Yeah. So so I guess it might be better in Brazil. Y'all lost a lot of money from that, though. 
We did for sure. But I think the only World Cup that was profitable. Well, it's never profitable. Uh, like long term, like and profitable in a sense of uh, it's South Africa because the infrastructure helped them a lot. Possibly, I guess Qatar also they built a lot of infrastructure with it, but Qatar spent the GDP of Portugal, and they probably killed a bunch of people. <laughs> well, <laughs> not, we're not gonna say that. Just, uh, allegedly, 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 <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, Qatar did a lot of nasty I get things. Banned for Qatar for yeah, saying that. I'm trying not to get canceled here. So Qatar allegedly did a lot of illegal stuff to get this yeah. World Cup, and did a lot of illegal stuff while building this World yes, Cup hotels, and they sucked ass in the World Cup. They were the worst host in the Whoa. host history. Maybe the worst team ever oh, in World three. Cup history. Oh, and three instantly, just like no, and and they scored one goal and they allowed seven or eight. They were yeah. horrible. Well, I think they do have the record for the first host team to ever get knocked out first. No, no, <laughs> South Africa got knocked out first, but they got four points. They were the first host nation to not get a point oh. at home, not even a, <laughs> not even a draw, nothing. Fuck, and, man. And, and honestly, their group wasn't weak, but it wasn't like a powerful group, right? Yeah. They didn't play well at all. Like no, because they suck. Yeah, it was just it was, it's well, like. Do you remember they played in the Gold Cup here in the U.S. against our I don't B C team? Oh wow, they lost to the U.S. B team. Wow, oh, that doesn't surprise me. But what it, what it reminds me of is if you ever played FIFA and you put the setting to like amateur, <laughs> but you're like That's you don't Qatar. play, you just fucking whoop them. Um, yeah. By the way, I, I even Qatar. I I don't know if I should ever go to Qatar because I know they're very. Sensitive it's sometimes, v- yeah. Not only sensitive, it's very strict and how you get in, get out. Yeah, and I was calling them human rights Qataris on Twitter. Yeah, dude, that shit was crazy. Yeah, the whole fucking. I think if debacle. I did that there, I don't know if I would have. Um, uh, I, I, I want to see you. Yeah, I probably would. Say Are you, I want to see you. I, Dustin would be here. It'd be me and Dustin. <laughs> it would be you and Dustin. <laughs> It'd be me and Dustin hanging out. It's like yeah, he so, got yeah. We tactical managers doing streams from the prison in Qatar. Oh no, your name. Your you would. Be like Kanye. We wouldn't mention your name anymore. Oh, you wouldn't be. It would just to- be like Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be like. Uh, you remember that one time? Oh. And we'll look at the camera. And be like, I mean, oh, um, I mean, I mean. Yo, no, no, no. <laughs> or we could confuse everybody and just act like Dustin was. I you would this like whole time. to believe. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I would like to believe that if we brought Brittany Griner back from Russia, <laughs> I'd like to believe the U.S. government would try to bring me back from Qatar. But you're so fucked. I was like, <laughs> they were just like, nah, man. I'm they don't sorry. give a fuck, bro. There was a fucking military dude that they didn't even bring back, but they went for Britney. Like, how fucked is that? So yeah, they probably wouldn't it? bring me. Yeah, you're fucked, dude. This dude was an ex, like military, like seal or some shit. Didn't even bring him back. <laughs> um, uh, last little bit here. What's what's next for the channel right now? What's the what's the next plan? Well, other than the stuff that you mentioned, are you? Are you doing anything in terms of like traveling? Or are you? Oh, I know you're doing a project this Sunday, which will have already been out. Um, how? Oh, actually, here's the great question that's connected to that. Are you full time on this yet? Um, because I remember last time we talked, you were like, "That's the goal." That was the on, first podcast. Depends on what you define by full time. We definitely work on it. Maybe 40 hours a week. Okay, that's full time. But I do have my own company, and that's where I make actual money. What do you, what do you do? I have a company that's an after school soccer program. Yeah, 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 that okay. I didn't know if that was the same one. I bro, honestly, up to this point, I thought that was like volunteering work. No, nope. for a while I was just like, yo, he, Filippo is such a saint. He no. he helps little kids. <laughs> I mean, I help you them. Do, I, do, do, do. I do, but I mean, the parents. It's pay a, for is the is program. it an academy or is that what? No, what it's, would you it's define mostly it? rec. Um, it's okay. So it's get, a recreational. There program. are kids that are very good, and I recommend them to academies. Yeah, because I I remember but it's mostly rec. When you Googled your name. When this was like when we first well, podcast, that's when I like worked at Orlando time. City. Oh, so that okay. was a that was a soccer school linked to the Orlando City Academy. So that was I that see. was much more competitive, and, and that like, was linked okay. to MLS Club. That, that yeah, if you Google my name, it'll be with the Orlando. What City. What age range or an age group? That one, or, no, I would, yours right now. Mine's is seven to eleven. It's elementary school Good age. Now the the Orlando City one, me um, and a couple other guys, we worked there. There was a whole staff, like an actual team. Yeah, the uh, the that one we had the U eights, the U tens, U twelves, U fourteen. Oh, wow. So it was a lot of teams that we coached. Wow. And we rotated the different works depending on what the workout was, but we all worked together. And you have to actually. That one almost feels like more serious. Serious. Yeah, and like, I worked there with Renato Abreu for a while. He yeah. was a f- one of the biggest Flamengo players of all time in wow. Brazil. Played for the national team Brazil. So it was good to learn from him how you, not in a professional level because you can't 
you don't go that far with 14 year olds yeah but of course not. how to implement actual tactics how yeah. to get the team ready for a game yeah in a professional way yeah you know as an adult this is like connected but a little bit different you know as an adult watching soccer now i realize how badly i fucked up as it because i coached middle school girls soccer in college and i never did anything tactical like so you ever seen you seen ted lasso yeah so when i was watching did you like it first of all i enjoyed it I would say like this: It's enjoyable to watch, but it's um, it's a very British sense of humor. Yeah, okay. which uh, which are like I can't die laughing of it, but I'm just yeah, like yeah. Eh, I'm having a good time here. Right, right. <laughs> it is kind of like, it's like, like it's not like, like The Office where I'm like almost vomiting oh, while yeah, I'm yeah, laughing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of like having a good time, but it's not really. So uh, when I was watching Ted Lasso, when I watched like certain like just things about coaching, I realized like it's about impact and also changing and stuff. When I was a soccer coach, bro, I was just like, I'm going to play my best players and I'm going to let them play. <laughs> yeah, but but depending on the level that you're coaching, that's all right, right? Yeah. Obviously, when you go to a professional level, it's also like there's so many school. details involved in that game. The level, like ego yeah. management, tactics of how one team plays, how you set up, how do you counter that? So it's much more in depth. But when you're coaching kids, if it's not a real academy, if it's semi-competitive or rec, yeah, you more you, you don't even go into tactics because the kids yeah. don't even want to hear that. Yeah. They don't want that. And they need to have fun with what they do. Otherwise, there's no point of it. Soccer, you need to have fun when you're a young kid. Yeah. U14, it's about having fun. Later on, you start to actually develop, get more competitive. Yeah. But if you overcoach at that age, you literally ruin their development. Even older. I mean, look at the Gio Reyna situation. Like, yeah, but that's just Greg being a moron. No offense, Greg. Yeah. I don't know. That's just. I, I wonder. I'm. I'm very curious to see what happens there. Yeah, we we skipped that, but I thought there were better ways for Greg to approach it. Maybe, hey, Geo, I have a starting eleven here. You're not in it right now, but I think you can become a star in the World Cup. You're going to get plenty of minutes. Work hard. You got this. That would be kind of like Geo would probably be. All right, let me work my ass for this. When you go and you just go to the guy and say, "Yo, dude, you're gonna have a limited role," it's like, don't well, ever, never say that. Yeah, it's like, why the fuck am I here then? Yes, that's exactly why am how I, here? I thought. You, you, I would even if I had a co and I actually I had this situation in high school where I was a captain and I I was coming off the bench. I wasn't getting much. I was you were average. a captain on the bench. Can you leave that shit? You're probably what are you, Captain Jack Sparrow? Yeah, that's what I was exactly. You came so, in running like him. It would be like beginning the game. Me and this other dude, the two captains, run up. I coin flip, but all right, see ya. I'm going to the bench for a bit. This motherfucking coach ran a three back, and I, I can't. I'm a left and right back. I, I don't. I can't run center back. So he was running three center backs, and I just can't fill that spot because I'm not tall enough. And so like. If I did come in and three back, he would. It, I would be playing a uh, left mid, and then just have to play more defensive, which is it's just like awkward because it's like, oh, I still have to run up a lot. It's like, I'm so used to playing that left back, filling in. They like you know that whole position mm -hmm. shift and stuff. So, anyways, but long story short, uh, when in situations even like that, even though my coach didn't play me that much, he never fucking told me, yo. By the way, I'm putting you on this team, and you're the captain, but you're not gonna be playing. I was like, what the fuck am i here for yeah, like, why, <laughs> if i'm not gonna play you, you gotta yeah. keep your players motivated even the backups because they might have to come in so when you it doesn't add up there's ways to say it i understand that you want to be transparent with your players and you want to kind of like let them know it's like hey so it doesn't shock them it's like wait why am i on the bench like but explain it's yes like, yes explain i it. will say that and yeah. keep him saying it's like dude you're like right here you're almost there you you can you have it well only say that if, he, if that's actually true though but Gio probably was true. Okay, okay. It probably was. I don't think... Well, I think He ended up not really getting that many minutes. Though. Well, but that's because of the attitude issue. Uh, right? By the way, I like the matching t-shirts yeah. right there. <laughs> we look Thanks, adorable. Man. Adorable. When did you make... When did you... When did you make these? Many... A long, long time ago. Really? Yeah. These are sick, dude. The quality is really nice. When people still thought Burr Halter could right? man-manage. No, these ones we didn't. We gave okay. it away in the game. I had a couple left. That's why I gave okay. it one to you. Do you sell merch? We do sell merch that we have okay. online. You guys got to buy merch. Yeah. yeah. Or don't. Whatever you like. No, just buy it. We need we need him to get a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Pulls out to I the mean, local games. I mean, you guys got, not even that. Imagine me just driving a Ferrari to a to World Cup game. It, 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 <laughs> you drive a better car than the fucking players. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that would change the way the world sees U.S. soccer. If you guys That's put, true. I, I also think if the U.S. men's national team wants to become a serious national team, 
what they should do is they should hire me as the national team coach. And put, <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. Listen to the plan. The plan is actually genius. Okay. Put as an assistant an actual coach. Okay. He'll run everything. Like a, I'm saying Pep Guardiola, not saying, but like an actual coach. Yeah. So you're Ted Lasso. <laughs> but but listen, here's the genius part of it. The actual coach will be able to do his job. I'm the one that's going to take the heat all the time. Mm. It's also going to be so controversial that everything's going to be on me, not on the players. Isn't that what being a president is? Because you're just the face. Pretty that much. is true. You're the president. Yeah, you don't you're, do you're jack shit and you're blamed for everything. So you know what? Those <laughs> kids predicted it. Tactical Ooh. manager for president. They predicted this. I well, can't. Like, I can't run for president here. I can't either. <laughs> I was born in Brazil, and I, I have the American citizenship. But for you to be present here, yeah, you, you have to be born here. Which you is have so to be stupid. born. Which hopefully, by the time I'm old enough to be president, which I think it's like ninety years old, right? No, <laughs> yeah, that's what they're running yeah, nowadays. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we're about to have Joe Biden versus Trump, the the second matchup, which is so crazy. Yeah, so so I think by the time I'm old enough to be president, I hope they change that law. So. All right, so uh, I'll probably lose before we wrap it up here. Tell me about this acai bowl we're gonna get. <laughs> this dude, this dude goes, yo. So I, I tell him, I'm like, all right, we got two hours for the pod, and like, if we, uh, and that's that's all I said. He was like, all right, if we wrap up early. I gotta take you here. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's why I talk super fast. So every ever since I was a kid, there's this. It it looks like ice cream, but it's essentially just like a. A smoothie, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but you eat, like, you eat like ice cream. It's acai with guarana. And no what that is. with guarana syrup. It's sweet. It's delicious. It's wonderful. It's the greatest thing I've had in my Can life. Can you say it again? Guarana. Walala. And Wa-wada. it's more It's more known as a, a surfer's food, right? Because you, because at least in Rio, what we would do is you would go to the beach, you'd either play soccer or you'd surf, you'd like be on the sun all day and you just get like that nice bowl of acai it's it's delicious it's great and it's healthy interesting it's not like the acai that you in had America, here or yeah. you probably had well i mean there is here in america in orlando but, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's uh it's delicious and if you ever go to brazil by the way in rio go to the beach go to any little i don't know any oh, so good there, dude. any area they have a acai bowl you won't regret it. It's delicious. Sometimes they mix it with honey. Sometimes they mix it with strawberry, banana. I personally just like it with guarana. It's delicious. Guarana. All right, and guys. And healthy. Everybody follow this motherfucker. Or don't. Or don't. Don't, don't follow. Am, like, I gonna no. get, wait, am I going to get canceled at this podcast? I don't know, dude. What did we say that was bad? I don't know. I mean, hey, guys. if Maradona, dead coke. This is true. Well, it is it's true. So The... Uh, Masturbation Qatar, joke? Allegedly Allegedly Even though it's been killed proved people. But it's allegedly <laughs> Killed people <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly I don't think we'll be canceled I think we won't be able Maradona to. allegedly did coke just, Actually no That was proven in the drug test That was proven Yeah that was yeah. proven I think everyone knows We did that confirm that Messi didn't do it That's true Which is true also um, We did also say that Do you think Messi In a way is like Jesus because he's the reincarnation of Maradona, just the perfect form of him. He can't be the reincarnation. He, <laughs> I was, know, they're the same the he wasn't even coached by Maradona. <laughs> the real one died. <laughs> yeah. Even before. <laughs> no, I, I, Messi is just... Um, dude, Maradona was built different, bro. That motherfucker was just Messi. dude. Messi is just... Um, there's something off about him. I'll say that. The, yeah, the, that, fucking- talent, that talent level is not normal. Dude, are you kidding me? He had growth hormone, uh, you know, the growth hormone yeah. deficiency when he was young. And he's still small. Yeah, he is pretty small. And he's still small. Uh, it, the talent level of Messi is um, something I've never seen in my lifetime. Were you Messi over Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo? I've always been Messi. Okay, okay. I, 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 and I'm I, Brazilian. I think we, did, we but, talked about this last podcast. I just can't remember. Well, Messi's the better player. Ronaldo's a legend. And Ronaldo is brilliant. Absolutely. And Ronaldo is... Iconic. I would even argue that Ronaldo might be the most efficient soccer player I've seen in my lifetime. Efficiency. I've never seen someone that efficient. But I've never seen someone as good as Messi. Bro, Ronaldo's in fucking Saudi Arabia. I mean, they're paying $200 million a year. $200 million fucking dollars at age of 38. Imagine this. Imagine you are are not as good at your job as you used to be, and you get a pay raise. That's Ronaldo. And you get to like 
chill, kind of like. I mean, I don't know if it's thing. fun to live in Saudi Arabia, but yeah, I no, mean, I'm I'll, saying chilling in the sense of like, I'm pretty sure the competition is not. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> not. <laughs> but I mean, just, I, I, I would envy Messi a bit more because he's probably going to make a lot of money and live in Miami. So. Yeah, but for, I don't think that's going to happen this year. No, no, it's two years like probably. Two, yeah. I think he still wants, but I mean, think about it. Would you rather make two hundred million dollars in two years and live in Saudi Arabia, or make maybe fifty million dollars oh, yeah, a year and live in Miami? I'd probably go to Miami. Also, did you hear about um, the clause in Ronaldo's contract? I don't know. This is uh, this is the from new cast, so it's fake. Oh, okay, Fu- dude, that would have been so. You were funny. about to get canceled for fake dude, news, right there. Dude, that would have been so funny. You were gonna though. get. You were gonna get canceled. So the, for the, the I fake just saved claim you. was essentially that. Uh, if Newcastle made the uh, Champions League, that he would go he there would, on uh, alone. alone. <laughs> there was it was fake news there. No, no, God no, damn no. it, that'd be so funny. No, it was fake. That was so funny though. <laughs> like he loves the champions, you know. All right, man. Uh, everybody, go follow uh, Filippo here at Tactical Manager TV. Also, shout out to Dustin for also running things down there. Um, make sure you guys like his content and buy all his merch so he can buy Rolls Royce. All right, bye guys. See you next week. See you guys.